Inside the old city, there's a long way to go. We have today 60 families, nearly a thousand Jews living in the old Jewish quarter. But it's a drop in the ocean because there's still uh, a total number of residents of the old city is 32,000. 32,000 mm -hmm. in the whole of the old city, only 4,000 Jews. 3,000 in the Jewish quarter, which is only one ninth of the old city, and another thousand living in the old Jewish quarter. More can be reclaimed. There are Arabs ready to sell. We just need people who are ready to acquire. There's no shortage of families ready to move in. We are reclaiming and we can keep on going. That's inside the old city. And this is a very tricky business too, because uh, we have in, in, in Hebron right now, which is the first Jewish city, this was where King David had right. set up his, his uh, throne uh, in Jerusalem after leaving Hebron. But we have the Peace House, which was bought from Arabs, and, and it was originally the rightful owners of the Jewish people. And, and right now, they're fixing on evicting 50 families who are living there. So what you're doing um, is indeed a great mitzvah, a good deed sanctioned by God, a very important holy work, uh, awaiting the culmination of the redemption. And it takes a lot of faith, and it's very dangerous, and it's very tricky, even linkily. It is tricky, and we have to work um very carefully number one to protect the Arabs who are selling sometimes of course uh, you may even have uh, a situation where you would look bad just so that the Arab has a cover story unfortunately where it's not a normal situation uh, the Arabs can be killed if they sell to Jews and Any they have been they have been anywhere in the world not with us necessarily here in Jerusalem but their land dealers have been killed in a normal situation throughout the whole world any person can buy and sell here, and if an Arab sells to a Jew, he can be killed. And therefore, one has to have pretend court cases, sometimes middleman, sometimes moving overseas, whatever is necessary in order to protect the Arabs who are selling. One thing is for certain, though, this belongs to us. The old, the old Yemenite neighborhood that today may be Silwan, the Arabs are living on old Jewish land. Even the Arabs still call the land Harbat Yaman. They know that the mm -hmm. land was owned by the Yemenite Jews. They don't have title to many of the places here. Sometimes we're actually we're going back and we're buying an old Jewish property. So first and foremost, have to understand that this area, the Holy Basin, whether it be the old city, the city of David, the Mount of Olives, the old Yemenite neighborhood, all belong to the Jewish people. Title also belongs to the Jews before they were kicked out and we today are simply going back there when there is an Arab who is prepared to sell We don't go door knocking and we are adding Jewish life to this area today. Thank God. There are families There are kindergartens. There are centers of Jewish learning once again back in the old Yemenite neighborhood once again in the city of David Amen. And That's once wonderful. again in the old city, of course, there's another area behind the Mount of Olives Also on the Mount of Olives itself. There's a Jewish neighborhood. It's a miracle the world said that no Jew should ever live on the Mount of Olives. You may recall that Yasser Arafat said that the only Jew who he would ever allow to be in his Al-Quds, in his Jerusalem when he thought it was going to be divided, were those Jews who have been here for generations. Of course, he was referring to a dead Jew. A dead Jew was allowed to be in his Al-Quds. Well, today he is dead and buried and we have a Jewish neighborhood on top of the Mount of Olives. The world tried to stop it, the United Nations tried to stop it, peace now tried to stop it. But at the end of the day, a few committed Jews overseas helped fund a project that basically brought back Jewish life to an old Jewish land. It was owned by a Jew, Moshe Wittenberg, and all we did was buy out the Arabs who were there and added a Jewish neighborhood there. And today there's 119 families going to be living on the Mount of Olives. That's a miracle. Now, if Christians want to get involved in helping with this holy work. Uh, can they send donations? Can they buy property to hand over to the Jewish people in these neighborhoods to, to help with this wonderful mitzvah that you're doing, to, to kind of undergird your efforts? Those who believe in God, those who believe in the return of the Jewish people to this homeland, those who understand the importance of Jerusalem, we welcome their support. We are open to people helping us do many of the projects. Obviously, all the investments, everything has to be in the name of the Jewish people. Absolutely. Uh, because we're talking about Jewish life and the return of the Jewish people to uh, the center of the Jewish world. Uh, but support uh, from anyone in the world, we are most uh, happy to, uh, to receive. And we will put that address on the screen. Uh, can they also give us credit cards if they need to? Yes, they can. Great. Okay. So we know how we can become actively involved, uh, not just with mere words of the tongue, we're told, but in action and in truth, 
what we can do to help out in this holy endeavor, uh, which has taken a, a lot of faith and continues to, because people like Daniel are standing against the pressure from their own government, from the world even, and uh, there's been some very dangerous times. Uh, the Atrat Kohanim has uh, suffered losses as a result of a, a terrorist attack against them in the city here. We have, uh, unfortunately, over the years had a number of uh, students from various seminaries inside the old Jewish quarter that have been stabbed and killed. Um, we had a security guard that was killed. There's no question it is very volatile. Uh, the only way to get, have true security is instead of having 60 families is to have 600 families. Amen. The only way to have true security is to have more Jewish life in the hearts of Jerusalem. Another way to ensure that this stays safe is for the world to appreciate that you cannot possibly have two sovereign bodies so close to each other. I think American, the American uh, citizens surely appreciate this. I mean, everyone, anyone watching this program, of course, knows that America, Australia, France, England joined together as a coalition. They went overseas, thousands of kilometers, did all these great nations travel in order to change the face of two countries for the sake of keeping terrorism away from their own shores. I don't believe that any thinking, sensible, logical citizen of America could possibly expect that we would have on our back doorstep a few hundred meters away from the center of Jerusalem to have these same people that are full of hate, full of terrorism. Would America honestly expect us to have Hezbollah, Hamas, Iran, any of these people having set up shop a few hundred meters away from the middle of regular Jerusalem? No, I don't believe they do. And therefore, to divide Jerusalem cannot be, will not be, is absurd. Eventually, I believe that America and many countries around the world wake up also to the concept that two states for two peoples can only work if we're talking maybe about Jordan and Israel as two separate states. But to divide up the land of Israel for a two-state solution, clearly something that could never be. Well, now our stance on that is that three-quarters of Jordan belongs to Israel. And uh, we feel that the Arabs have 21 other states they can go home to, and that's where they need to be.